I'm Professor Adrian Saville and this is The Doctor is on the Money. In this episode, we're going to look at the horrific headline figure, minus 50% GDP contraction in the second quarter for South Africa. What does it mean? How do we make sense of it? And where does South Africa go from here? If you take the headline number of the week, which is a 50% fall uh, in GDP in the second quarter, it makes for disastrous reading. And there's, there's no way of dressing it up or mistaking it. It was a horrific quarter by every measure. The economy collapsed. But uh, what shouldn't be lost in this headline drama is that that minus 50% in the second quarter is arrived at by using statistical techniques and to describe it in its fullness, it is quarter on quarter, seasonally adjusted and annualized. And if I've used that metric to arrive at a minus 50, you know, this is like saying, babe, I'm gonna be home at 10 o'clock, quarter on quarter, seasonally adjusted and annualized. It's like, what on earth am I supposed to make of that number? So I would venture that, you know, whilst we can't ignore or escape that circumstance or the reality, what we really wanna do is take a step back and figure out how that minus 50 squares into the bigger frame called the overall economy and what it's gonna look like for 2020. So one of the challenges of using these very near-term measures, such as our quarter on quarter seasonally adjusted and annualized, is that when we look at quarter three, what it's going to show is a grand recovery in the economy and it will probably come in uh, at a 50 or 60% growth rate. Now the narrative is going to become, we have a surging economy, a massive rebound. Whereas that isn't quite the case. What that 60 represents is a leap off a very, very depressed base back to some type of normality. So perhaps uh, uh, an easier way, uh, a more robust way, a more sensible way of thinking about these headline numbers is to imagine the economy being a number 100. That's your total economy. And divide it into quarters, 25, 25, 25, 25. And the second quarter of the economy, uh, calendar quarter, so April, May, June, that 25 fell to 12. That's your 50% collapse. And in the third quarter, the economy is going to recover back. It won't get all the way back to 25. It might get to 20. And so measuring the bounce from 12 to 20, that's going to be your spectacular recovery. But the 20 is still short of the 25. So the real issue then is where does the country finish the year when we add all of these very bouncy quarters together. So if we add uh, each of these quarters together, it is likely that South Africa finishes 2020 minus 10. So in, in, by the end of the, of the four quarters, when all is said and done, the economy will finish the year 10% smaller than it was in 2019. What minus 10 means is it's a bad year and minus 10 is better than minus 50 but it still leaves us with an economy that is substantially smaller. It will be our biggest annual shrink uh, or, or contraction in the economy that we have on record. So that gives a descriptor of just how tough circumstances are. But you know, GDP is, it's a metric, it's a number, it's a statistical creation that's out there. You know, we don't eat GDP, we don't see GDP, we don't touch GDP. So let me try and turn it into two very real circumstances uh, for citizens and for businesses. The first circumstance or reality, and this has already landed, is that a smaller economy makes for very difficult business circumstances. And there is a two-thirds relationship between company earnings and GDP. To put that sentence into sort of a Saturday afternoon braai conversation, uh, of every one rand in earnings that you report, 66 cents of that rand is explained not by your business, uh, not by your branding, not by your marketing, but by what's going on in the economy. So the economy has an overwhelming influence on your business's top line and bottom line performance. And with an economy doing minus 10, uh, the read through for companies is 2020 will be a 50% decline in earnings. It's a very, very tough circumstance, and that makes it worse than global financial crisis. The other aspect uh, that cannot be lost in this conversation is that although an economy can't be seen and touched, 
people exist inside of this thing called the economy. That's where we go to work, that's where our jobs are, uh, that's where our families, food and incomes come from. And an economy that shrinks 10% is going to have a material impact on a measure of this called the Human Development Index. And the Human Development Index measures the prosperity and the well-being of the country. And South Africa's Human Development Index is going to go backwards substantially in uh, 2020, and it will take the form of higher unemployment, greater inequality, uh, businesses shutting down, wages uh, that are stagnant or wages that are lost, per person incomes falling, and more. And arguably the headline number uh, to, to, to emphasize here is the unemployment figure. And our estimate is that we will uh, uh, go into 2021 squaring up to a 40% unemployment number. If we continue this trend, South Africa goes from a stressed circumstance into a condition of crisis. South Africa has to reverse this condition, as is the case in many other countries. And so that really turns the language then to, or the, or the conversation to, in what position is this country and other countries to recover from, from crisis. And there are some countries that are going to recover very quickly. They've already got into the business of recovery and that's where we're talking about the shape of the recovery, V-shaped, L-shaped, U-shaped, and so on. And if you look at uh, Germany, uh, South Korea, China, the origins of uh, COVID-19, all of them are taking the shape of V. In other words, they're quickly getting back to, to where they were. South Africa looks more like an L that we will have some recovery, but it's not going to be back to where we started. And that is because South Africa's structural arrangement, the things that build and sustain inclusive economic growth are missing in action. We need uh, six core ingredients to be able to achieve high growth, sustain that high rate and translate that high economic growth into social prosperity. You need six factors. Those six factors include a high savings and investment rate so that you have gross domestic fixed investment, bricks and mortar. Uh, you have demography, more people coming into the workforce than going into retirement. The third ingredient is you need stable policies and capable institutions. The fourth and fifth ingredient are capable and effective education and health care. And the sixth ingredient is connectedness to others, economic openness. Uh, in, in passing, it's interesting to note that this aspect or attribute of health uh, has been in our six-factor prosperity model for the past decade and in many conversations overlooked and ignored. You cannot build a prosperous society if you do not have a healthy society, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, psychologically healthy. So health is a critical aspect and that is an issue that has really landed uh, in COVID-19. Uh, but if we put those six factors together, South Africa scores about halfway there, which means while we're talking about 5.5% economic growth, we really only have the capacity to produce 1.5% or 2% economic growth, which is not nearly enough. So South Africa has work to do to fix these six factors. So if South Africa isn't in shape to produce the inclusive, sustainable, elevated econ economic growth that is needed, what does South Africa need to do? And here, the beauty uh, of economics is that we don't have to invent the wheel. We can learn from others. And there are uh, numerous uh, country cases that are often described as miracles. And when we put these six factors into the equation, they're not that miraculous. In fact, they're relatively easily explained. And who are these countries? Well, we've got examples from uh, the history of Germany and Japan building out of the uh, devastation of World War II to become the second and third biggest economies in the world over the next 30 years. And then we've got the here and now examples of economies like Ethiopia, Chile, China, which are producing sustained, elevated, prosperous growth. What can we learn from those and how can South Africa hold itself up to that lens? And so in the next set of episodes, what we're going to do is look at each of these six factors uh, uh, in each episode on a case-by-case -case basis to build a case for a prosperous South Africa.